Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to show you my haul for July of 2018. So stay tuned. As you could probably tell this was a huge manga month for me. Thank you to Right Stuff Entertainment for having a huge sell on some of the stuff and as well as in stock trades in Barnes and Noble. They had a buy two get one free and a coupon. So let's get this started. I'm not going to be doing much of an overview of every single one of these books, so I'll just pick one at random and show you some of the art. This is the Great Viking Saga, the Vinland Saga. Uh, this was brought here to America by Kadansha Comics, and I think the first few were 20 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, and it went up to $23. So, got the rest of these up to volume 9. I think there's 11, or no, 10 volumes out so far. Let me just show you some of the artwork here. Yeah, this stuff is really solid. Up there with Vagabond and Blade of the Immortal for me. And kind of brutal and violent, but that's right up my alley because what I'm going to show you next. The greatest manga ever, Berserk. It's back one year between volumes 38 and 39 with the poster. And um, I don't know if it's going to be a year or three years in between 39 and 40, but we're back on Fairy Island. We have to meet some new characters, and this is a book that I usually put everything else aside to, and stop doing what I'm doing to read this book. Best manga ever. Wolfmon, Volume 2. This was the backup artist on Berserk, and he went on to create his own book. I think there's eight volumes of these in total. Um, I think volume one was out of print for a while, but it came back into print. Um, yeah, you can tell that his style is very similar to Miura's as far as his backgrounds and castles and things like that. But I enjoyed the first volume and I'm curious to see if it holds up. Uh, I picked up a bunch of bleach because that's what my jam was back in the day. So let me just pick one of these. Um, I haven't read any of this and I haven't seen any of the anime. Uh, this is after the Wekomundo, Wekomundo saga. So curious to see where it takes Ichigo and company after they defeat, I guess, Aizen, maybe? If they do defeat him, I'm hoping, because that saga is over by now. But I think it ends in volume 72, so I got a little bit to go before the finale. And I took advantage of the Amazon sale. Uh, it was five dollars off a twenty dollars or more book, and I got the fairy tale volume four. This is the oversized collection of I think five books. This collects it issues or volumes 16 through 20, and yeah, that all um, oversized artwork, black and white. But it's got this thin paper that I really like, it's glossy. I hope they continue this. I know there's a volume 5, but I, keep, I hope they keep going with the entire series like this. It would be nice to have it in one format and not have these giant oversized books sitting up against little standard size manga volumes. There's a little character from Grave Group. What was it? Groove? Rave? Rave Adventure Groove? Oh, I can't remember. But I haven't read that in years, but I own that. So, yes, this is Fairy Tale. So most of my manga pickups are just missing holes that I have in my collection. I'm also missing volume 37, but that damn thing went up in price recently, up to like $200 for a third Amazon sale or third party seller. So no thanks, I'll wait for the omnibuses that were just recently announced, even though it's going to take forever. Can't show much of this because it's got lots of nudity, sex, and violence, but who doesn't love that stuff? I talked about this a little bit as being one of the most disappointing endings of an anime, but... It's pretty cool. It's kids, when you die, you get reincarnated and go fight zombies, monsters, ghosts, aliens, as these badass characters here. And if you acquire enough points, you can be brought back to life or acquire weapons or bring somebody else who died back from the dead. So it's pretty cool. I really like this. I haven't read any of the 30s, so I was hoping to collect them and get volume 37 sometime. And of course, who is not familiar with this, if you, unless you've been sleeping under a rock, Naruto, catching up on this series here. Some of volume 60. I'll probably do a 
tour of my manga sometime soon. Because I forgot I've done a tour of my collected editions, hardcovers, and omnis, but I haven't done a tour of my manga. It's basically like an old guy's manga that's been collecting since the early 90s, late 80s, and hasn't gotten into anything new other than Vinland Saga. Every once in a while, get something new. Uh, and here is the rest of my Excel Saga that I was missing. Uh, this is not one of the most popular manga, but I found this really endearing and cute and funny and made me laugh out loud a few times. I was found this because of the anime. I was a big fan of the anime, but ended up really liking the first... I think, I think I've read like the first 12 volumes of this, and now that it's complete, I can read it. And it's got the one thing that I hate, the untranslated sound effects, because then they have the index back here with the translated sound effects, and that has always been horrible to me. All right, let's look at the next book. This is Lighthouse. This is one of those in-stock trades that I just randomly bought. Um, it's a little independent book, and it's about a soldier. That This, this is during the uh, Spanish Civil War, and decides to just escape, and he is done with war, and he befriends this old guy in the lighthouse who is not angry at the world unlike the soldier and this was a really cool book it was a really fast read and i really really liked it and i want to check out the writer's other stuff i think apparently he wrote a book called wrinkles so i want to check that out it's really small it's the size of a manga and it's really thin probably about 80 pages if that um, but it was just one of those books that i needed to flesh out my order up to 50 dollars so i can get free shipping and I can't believe I did not own this, but I found this for $10 at a comic book store. It was used, but uh, this is the DC Rebirth event. It's just a one-shot in oversized hardcover, and this came out probably about two years ago. I had no idea that it didn't have a dust jacket. It's just your art on the cover, so that's pretty cool, And it's, but it's the size of an oversized Rebirth hardcover. So here, let's compare it to the Wonder Woman and talk about that next. Nope, not Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Rebirth Deluxe Edition Volume 2. The Wonder Woman Deluxe Edition Volume 2 is the one that was left out of my order on accident. So, yep, there's the Rebirth book. See, size, dimensions, everything's the same. It's just missing a dust jacket, which that's okay. Uh, so let's look at the Harley Quinn Rebirth Deluxe hardcover. Really, really love the interior art of this here. That is Frank Cho. Actually, I think he did all the variant covers in the back. Uh, this collects the Rebirth issues. I believe it's 13 or... Four, no, 14. 14 to 27. And then the Harley Quinn 25th anniversary special, which has a lot of artists um, working on it. So uh, I enjoyed the first book. I thought it was really good. And I think I liked it a little bit more than I did the New 52 stuff. The first Omnibus. I know there's a second one coming out soon, so... I'm willing to keep going with that. Not that that wasn't fun to read, but I enjoyed the Rebirth stuff a little bit more. And yeah, this is the Frank Cho variant covers. Love that cover. Most of his stuff is really good. This book's pretty interesting. This started off as a Kickstarter. It's a Spain, I think it was a Spanish Kickstarter. And Magnet Studios decided to print it here in English. The first two volumes, and I think there's three out so far. It's about these little dwarf warriors, but I fell in love with the artwork. I saw it in the Marvel Masterworks forum. Somebody had kickstarted it about, I guess, two or three years ago, and I always wanted it. And when I was in Spain, I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. So I decided to get the English version, which I didn't know was out. But it's out of print, of course, so I had to buy a used copy. And I went around to different stores, and I found one at a half price books, and luckily only paid twelve dollars for it. But yeah, love the artwork, little warrior dwarfs. I know nothing else about this, but I really enjoy the art, and that's what sold me on it. Um, come on, look how badass that is! It's great. So yeah, really looking forward to diving into this. Even hope they complete the rest of the series. Speaking of series, we have the continuation of the TMNT IDW series, Volume Seven. We finally get Michelangelo on the cover. Here's the back, and just like all the other stuff from IDW, it does not contain a dust jacket. Um, so this collects the ongoing series. Um, probably, to me, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the best incarnation of Ninja Turtles that I've ever read. Just great artwork and great storytelling. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Actually, I did not like the artwork 
at the beginning of this volume. For some reason, I was not really digging it. I don't know. I know it's a fill-in artist for the first two issues, but I thought with a book like this, they could have gotten somebody a little bit better. Oh, well. And because I know they probably will never release it in the oversized Ultimate Editions, I went ahead and got the first volume of the IDW Classics. So this is the stuff that's in between the Laird and Eastman stuff. The big editions that you have, the big black and white ones, are the complete, the Pizza Works color versions. This is the stuff that they didn't do that's in between those issues. So I guess this is the way I'll end up collecting it. So it's pretty interesting that we don't have the stuff in oversized hardcover. Wish they would have kept going with the stuff that they didn't write, but I guess I get it. At least we get it in color, and these are cheap enough now. That's something I hope they keep going with, because I did not see a Volume 5 solicitation yet, but this is the Supergirl collection by Peter David. It's got the Young Justice and Superboy crossover here. And collecting more of the Linda Danvers adventures. We have Volume 4 of the Captain America Epic Collection. I love these books. This is $40 for... Look how much you get you get captain america 139 to 159 in here and actually i would i am wrong it's not just captain america it's captain america and the falcon at the time so stuff i've never read and i passed up on the omni so i'm glad i'm picking it up like this at least and hope they keep continuing with them i know there were two other captain america epic collections just solicited so Excited that they keep pumping those out. So speaking of Epic Collections, this is probably the smallest, thinnest Epic Collection that I have picked up. Now, I don't know if that's because of the paper. It seems a little bit thinner than that Captain America one, but I don't know. This collects the Elektra miniseries, The Roots of Evil, and then Daredevil 333 to 346. Um, I don't know. This era was pretty interesting. This is after the Fall from Grace Epic Collection. But I love Scott McDaniel's artwork. Part of the reason why I ended up getting this. And I really like um, this Root of Evil miniseries with Elektra. She just came back from the dead and fall from grace. And I thought it was a pretty interesting retelling of her story and how she was brought back to life. And then it's got Daredevil just, I guess, hanging out after fall from grace with his new badass razor sharp costume that he's got. And I think this one here has three or four different writers. Um, I haven't read some of this stuff, but I've read most of it. So looking forward to going back and rereading this stuff when I do my Daredevil readathon. Then we've got John Byrne, book two, the hardcover Wonder Woman. So collecting the rest of his run. This is after the William Messner Loeb run and the Mike Del Toto stuff, but before the Phil Jimenez stuff, and then there's other stuff in between that. I'm not sure what's up with his Artemis. I'm not really digging that. I'm usually a huge John Byrne fan. Um, I had stopped reading comics after volume one, so this is the first time I'm going to be reading them. And there's Cassie. He did introduce us to her. Um, so I've never read any of this stuff. I know that Artemis Requiem, she came back from the dead in that, so that's why you see her here. And yeah, I don't know if this is any good or not, so I guess we'll find out. And then the final Invincible volume, volume 12, Bittersweet. And this, yeah, this collects the final issues, and it's the Great War. I'm not gonna spoil anything towards the end i will say i was a little disappointed with the ending i thought it was a little bit rushed i think it could have used another issue or two uh, just the artwork alone good lord otley's art is on point in this run i'm glad he is doing amazing spider-man now because his stuff is so solid i'm sure you probably won't be seeing panels like that in amazing spider-man but still he makes comic books fun and it's the reason why i collect comics because of art like this but yeah, Invincible, Robert Kirkman's other story, uh, other than Walking Dead, so, the finale. We have Ape Sapien Zero, I guess, or three, depending on where you want to put it. Um, nothing special about Underneath the Dust Jacket, and it collects Ape Sapiens Volumes 1 and 2, 
which happened before <laughs> volume the hardcover volume one and then volume nine. I think in chronological order, this happens after volume two. That's why they printed them this way. So this will probably I'll probably put this after my volume two, even though those books came out first. And here's another beautiful European hardcover, Izuna, Volume 2. This particular story, or actually Izuna, takes place in the Legend of the Scarlet Blades world. So these are brought by Humanoid with amazing artwork. I'm not finished reading it, so I better not flip through much through here. And just really pretty storytelling. I really like this world. I have done an overview of Crimson, so if you want to see that, just check out the channel. It's on there. And here is the Batman Grant Morrison Volume 1. Now, what we did find out from here, here's the dust jacket. Kind of like the spine. And here is the inside of the book. Nothing to write home about. What I did find out from the back of the cover here is that this is one of three. So there will be three of these. So let's look through here. This contains Batman 655 to 658 and 663 to 683. And then stories from DC Universe Zero and 52, 30, and 47, which introduces us to Damien Wayne, his son. Um, if you're wondering what issues 659 through 662 are, those are the grotesque four-part series by Ostrander and Tom Mandrake, I think was the artist on that. Oh, I love The Clown at Midnight. This is such an awesome, awesome story. It's written more like a book, not a comic book. And it does not contain the whole resurrection of Raza Ghoul saga either. If you're a completist, you may want to keep your resurrection of Raza Ghoul hardcover. But what they do is pretty cool is they have these recap pages here with original artwork by Chris Burnham. So I thought that was cool. Um, in between the chapters to tell you what happens in the other books like Detective Comics or Nightwing. And here's the Tony Daniel stuff. So the first set of art is done by Andy Kubert, which is awesome. And then he's followed up by the great Tony Daniels. So. This is Grant Morrison's first run all the way up to R.I.P., I think. Yeah, this is some great stuff. Confusing as hell when he gets the Batman Rest in Peace and Final Crisis. But yeah, I wonder what elements of Final Crisis that will add to the second volume of this series. And curious what volume three will contain. We still don't have solicitations for those, but I'm sure they're coming. I mean, it is Grant Morrison and Batman. There's no way in hell they don't finish this out. And that was my haul for July of 2018. I would love to know what you guys ended up getting this month or what you plan on getting here in August. I know for myself, I'm going to get a few omnibuses like the X-Men Revolution omnibus, which I will probably do an overview sometime early next week. If this is your first time watching the channel and if you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button. And don't forget to check out our weekly show that comes out every Thursday where we talk about anime, video games, manga, and comic books and figures. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.